Welcome to Your Town Television Program. I'm your host for this segment, Jeff Klein, and today we have a special guest from the Naval Postgraduate School, the Director of the Center for Executive Education, Ms. Winley McAnally. So, Winley, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff, for having me. Uh, usually we start these segments off by learning a little bit about yourself, uh, why you came to Monterey, et cetera, and then we're going to jump in to learn all about the Executive Education Center and what it serves and, and what it does. So okay. first, let's start with you. Are you a uh, native Monterey person? Uh, actually, no, I'm a transplant. I moved here uh, 17 years ago. Um, I started off in upstate New York and uh, grew up in a small town outside of Rochester. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, uh, like I said, 17 years ago, my husband uh, convinced me that we should leave Seattle, Washington, and try a little town called Monterey. <laughs> and uh, I gave, I said, well, I'll give you two years, and if I hate it, we're moving to Wyoming. And uh, so 17 years later, I'm still here. And, and Wyoming <laughs> doesn't have you? Uh, Wyoming doesn't have me. How did you come to work to, at MPS, Naval Postgraduate School? Well, I was um, <clears throat> looking for a place where I could continue to learn and uh, have an opportunity to continue serving. And also, just uh, we were starting a family, so I was looking to have a shorter commute and be closer to home. Oh, okay. Yeah. And was your first job actually the director of Center for Executive Education? No, actually, I started off in the uh, Graduate School of Business and Public Policy mm -hmm. and helped them grow the Executive MBA program. And uh, throughout a couple different uh, positions and movements, uh, I ended up at the Center for Executive Education. Well, we're going to have a whole separate show on the executive um, master's of business administration and why we need one for oh, the Navy. Perfect. But I want to now focus <laughs> on, on the, uh, the Center for Executive Education. Can you okay. tell me uh, what does the Navy uh, do with that and what does it serve? Well, the Center for Executive Education at the Naval Postgraduate School was established in 1998. And our purpose is to design and deliver unique and highly re relevant and directly applicable executive education programs for the Navy senior leaders. So what's yeah. a senior leader in the Navy? Can you define that? Well, my group of students tend to be at the captain level and above, so, um, and GS-15, so senior civilians and uh, of the 06 uh, captain rank. So that's and, like a colonel in the Army. Very colonel in the Army. Usually yes. about 20 years in service or greater? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. GS-15 is Government Service 15, which are civilians? Uh, correct. Yes. Right. And do you ever get uh, flag officers or general officers? We do. We have um, kind of a diverse group, and we have a balanced uh, population of um, over 900 Navy senior leaders go through our programs, and sure. there's about... I would say a quarter to maybe half of them are flag officers and senior civilians. So these aren't actually graduate courses themselves. Describe some of the courses that the center offers. Sure. Well, we have um, uh, designed and delivered a portfolio of about seven different um, courses. Our leading innovation course is for flag officers and senior executives. and. Uh, it's designed to provide Navy senior leaders with not just a mindset, but a skill set hmm. in understanding the critical nature of innovation as it relates to your organizational success to the Navy. Well, just so, l hold on that course for a second. Sure. So that's for very senior officers. Mm -hmm. um, we seem to be very close to uh, the some of the Center of Innovation for Technology. Mm -hmm. Do we ever borrow ideas or people from uh, the uh, Silicon Valley area? Yeah, that's a good point. We have designed a day where we go up to visit industry into this program and we will spend a day looking and meeting with corporate leaders in innovation um, cells. Can you describe something. some of the industries that we visited? We have taken them to places like Bloom, um, VMware, mm -hmm. uh, Apple, Google, uh, just to name a few. Great. Yeah. And so what's some of the feedback that we've gotten from the students? Well, I say students, but these people are, are executives within our organization. So for the participants, yeah. what kind of feedback do they have once they actually see uh, what happens in, in our neighbor up to the north? Sure. Well, they 
find that there's a lot of parallels to their challenges in uh, large organizations like an Apple or a Google compared to the bureaucracy that we have in the Navy that they have to deal with. So they see the challenges, similar challenges, and so what the feedback has been um, great in seeing some business practices, successes, and some of their challenges and failures. So good lessons learned. Okay, so that's the innovation course. What else? We have a tailored support course, and it's uh, for flag officers, and mm -hmm. it provides one-on-one -on -one discussions. That's uh, by flag in, officers we mean admirals. Sorry, of yes, yeah, that, that's yes, okay. admirals. Right. Well, I was using yeah. that term, but yeah, yeah. go ahead. Want to so, make sure our audience knows. right. So for admirals, that's a confidential setting for um, admirals as they're transitioning to. Uh, positions of greater responsibility and visibility, mm -hmm. and uh, using our tailored, uh, customized approach, we have all the course content uh, determined before by the flag officer or the admiral before they arrive. And once we know what the content is, then our faculty can customize their discussions to really focus on the admiral's particular areas of concern or challenges. So in a way this prepares them for their next job, uh, but how do they know what to ask for? Uh, that's a good question. So we have created a list of tailored support topic listings that they can choose from. Can you give me an so, example? So they could choose from a variety of topics like uh, financial management mm -hmm. or um, contract management or uh, diversity and um, performance. Uh, your area of uh, effects-based thinking or risk management. So some large areas of, of uh, bodies of knowledge, some skill sets that some of them, they may have not touched it in a while since they may have had different um, uh, assignments. Sure, because we make them go back to C and that sort of thing. Right, <laughs> so they go from operational then all of a sudden they're thrown so back, back into the business uh, side. Right, sure. right, so they, they have an opportunity to get some tailored um, more like mentoring, coaching, and kind of updates. And is this always just one-on-one -on -one so that the instructor's talking personally to the flag officer? Generally, we like to structure it one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. uh, but sometimes it might be beneficial for the admiral to bring their close team and maybe their executive director who might happen to be either a, a, um, a flag officer, a reserve admiral, or a senior executive. Sure, that way they might be able to work things out. And help them achieve some alignment as they're uh, working through the transition. Okay, so we have person. the we have an innovation course where we borrow ideas from industry as well mm -hmm. as examples I know from the past. Mm -hmm. This flag transition course or the for admirals who are going to jobs that they can pick. What mm -hmm. else do we have? So we have uh, some workshops that are also offered for flag officers and um, civilians and their senior staff. We have a uh, the Strategic Planning for Execution and Assessment and Risk, or SPEAR, mm -hmm. workshop. And uh, that one's for uh, to designed to help flag officers and commanding officers uh, work collaboratively with their senior staffs in developing their strategic plan, um, their metrics, and um, outlining an execution plan. And that program, uh, we uh, offer uh, five times a year, and we deploy it to uh, fleet concentration areas to allow uh, teams to be involved. By yeah. fleet concentration areas, what areas are you talking about? It's so um, generally around San Diego, D.C., uh, D uh, Washington, D.C., um, Norfolk. So anywhere there's ships, large collection of ships right, in right, the Navy, okay, right. great. So we were trying to figure out how to allow the teams that might have travel constraints and budget restraints constraints to uh, be able to send as many teams to be able to um, participate. So it's cheaper so. overall for the Navy to sometimes send instructors to an area. And right. Have that done. right. It's a little more labor intensive on our end, but <laughs> I think we've gotten pretty efficient at uh, deploying these workshops and having a kind of a course in a box. Okay, so yeah. we had the, sp uh, the uh, strategic Steel. planning one. Right. What's, what's next? We also have a strategic communication workshop. Okay. Uh, and that one is kind of um, in parallel with the strategic planning workshop where it it's designed to help senior commanding officers and their staffs um, craft their strategic communication plan and as part of their overall strategic planning efforts. 
and that one we offer six times a year, and it's deployed um, also at fleece concentration areas, similarly in Washington, D.C., San Diego, um, including Naval Postgraduate School, and um, uh, that one's three days in length. For, whereas the SPEAR workshop is four days in length. Now, is that particular workshop done just with Naval Postgraduate School faculty, or do we pair anybody? With anybody? We have partnered with the University of Southern California, uh, Annenberg School mm -hmm. of uh, Communication and Journalism, and uh, it's been an extremely successful partnership with, with USC. Great. Yeah. So yeah. Those, those are the workshops then. How about yeah. uh, anything else? So for, we kind of focused on the flags and the, the, or the admirals and the senior executives. Right. We do know that in preparation to be a flag and a, and a senior civilian that we do need to look at growing them. And so we created a, uh, a captain level or 06 level and GS-15 level course called the Navy Senior Leader Seminar. And that one, we, it's designed to provide participants the, um, with the knowledge and abilities to lead and manage uh, complex organizations. So that one's nine days in length, which is a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, and we do offer it seven times a year, and all at Naval Postgraduate School now. Uh, it is of high demand, and it's hard to, there's a long wait list. Um, the quotas are managed by their communities, and the allocations are um, determined by the Chief of Naval Personnel. I, I'm sure it's very difficult to get in, but uh, I, some would say they want to come just to come and see Monterey, but tell us a little bit about their work schedule while they're here. Right. Well, <laughs> they start at 0730, and, but some, we do have a wellness portion that starts at 0500. So oh. Wellness They're meaning like, get up early and work right, out. Yeah, right, let's put it sure, in English for me. Right, right. <laughs> right. So they work out, and we do focus. We have a holistic approach to the Navy Senior Leader Seminar. Right. So we are looking at not just these other areas of competency, but we're looking at the overall um, person and their well-being. So we do have several sessions in the morning, and they do run. We do hold classes uh, through uh, 5:30 at night, and also on the weekend on Saturday. So it's not a boondoggle. So at least they're working they, hard. Yeah, yeah, boondoggle mean a, a free thing to do and have right. fun. No, right. No, there's no no free <laughs> like, lunch here. <laughs> they, they do get to see a little bit of Monterey though uh, at night to go out to dinner and Sunday, they right? They do. And some of this, yeah. what are some of the things they do on their Sunday time? Well, they, I've heard that they <laughs> do go. Um, they'll take advantage of the weather, so they'll go out and enjoy the the beach. Mm -hmm. um, they do uh, try and explore the aquarium, the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Sure. Um, there's some wine tasting, I hear. Well, that's good. <laughs> and some hiking and biking on the bike trail. And I know many of them, if they can, go down to the Big Sur and drive along Highway 1 if they can. There's also some golfing. Oh, so they do uh, get yeah. that appreciation yeah. for the area. They get a feel for the area. Now, now yeah. are some of these students return students uh, from their graduate days here? Or do all of them, is this their first time here? I, I would say there. we definitely have graduates of the Naval Postgraduate School. Um, there are more that have not had exposure to MPS, which are who are coming, which is great to see to oh, have them have that to, exposure to get an appreciation for the school and the area and the, and that sort of yes, thing. Yes, right? yes, great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you mm -hmm. get a chance to uh, touch base with a, a lot of our leaders uh, for the Navy um, as you develop the content. Uh, where do you get information as far as what to offer in these courses? So we. We are aligned directly with um, CNO's design strategy as Who's well as Chief the, of Naval the, Operations. Yes, That's sorry, right. Chief <laughs> of Naval Operations and um, his design strategy and also his leader development framework. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's an outline and there's a framework for those um, areas that have, uh, that he would like to see in all of the the folks that work in the Navy. Um, we hear from our workshops and through feedback from all of our courses these areas of challenges and concerns, and then we start um, adjusting our content and our curriculum to focus on those areas. Well, I understand you also uh, frequently go to the uh, flag conferences or the Admiral conferences and discuss mm -hmm. these items with them as well. Is that I correct? Do. That is correct. I will go to the New Flag Officer Training Symposium and Senior Executives uh, is in there. They, uh, 
at that point, that's where they are having their indoctrination for becoming a new flag or new admiral and a new senior executive. So we're hearing from the Navy senior leaders, the top senior leaders, in um, critical areas of concerns and areas of focus for all of them as they move forward in their new um, promoted careers. Oh well, so. that's well, that's wonderful. Now, you have you got any interesting experiences you can share with us with that? You know, without naming names, right. the senior leaders. <laughs> uh, probably something no, I no probably okay, can't but share <laughs> on TV. But I can say that in my tenure, uh, being at uh, the center for eight years now, uh, I have had over two thousand several thousands of flag officers and, and senior Navy senior leaders coming through our programs. And I have to say that I continue to marvel at the, the desire to continue to learn and to, um, to want to keep growing and not growing just themselves but their teams. And so it's and constantly with this a huge sense of humility in how they approach what they don't know. And so it just motivates me and uh, inspires me to keep trying to figure out how to continue to support them either through our existing programs or figuring out ways to um, design new things that might help them. Well, let's shift a little bit off the participants to your, I'm going to say, stable of instructors or okay. horses. You already mentioned that we paired uh, with some other universities in order to provide some of those instructors. Mm -hmm. But what kind of individual or personalities do you search for that would actually appeal to the senior leaders of our nation? So the faculty that seem to have really embraced the executive education uh, format are, uh, I think, those who are really deep in their expertise and who have this ability to bridge the concepts with uh, directly applying it to the, the Navy or the Department of Defense environment. And so the folks that are willing to really be challenged by the, the, um, our, our participants, um, kind of probing to see if these theories might actually work. And if they don't, to provide some ideas and brainstorm out loud with the, our participants. Now, so, when our participants graduate, do they ever reach back to MPS for help? They do. They do. And I think they reach back to faculty, and they don't let me know. <laughs> but there's definitely work and research and follow-on that occurs. Um, and uh, it's great. It's good exposure for the school. I think there's a tremendous amount of expertise and depth and breadth that we have at the institution mm -hmm. that um, we are sharing through these executive education programs. Well, yeah. Winley, thank you very much for being on the show today. Sure. We've had uh, Ms. Winley McAnally, the Director of the Center for Executive Education for the Naval Postgraduate School, as our guest, and we hope you've appreciated it as well.